Hey world, what up? NBA season's already kicked off. We're already going a little further in the East and Western Conference. And pretty much for every NBA team, they pretty much have played around five to seven games. We wanted to focus more here in the Western Conference. One of the quote-unquote title contenders coming out of the West that some people have in mind, some people don't. And they kind of have their opinions on both of these teams. So the two teams we're going to focus on is going to be the LA Clippers and the Denver Nuggets. Um, we already know last season in the playoffs in the bubble. In the second round, the Clippers were heavy favorites to go against the Denver Nuggets. Most people like myself, I had the Clippers winning that series in five, which should have been the case. But after a 3-1 series lead, the Clippers folded in the last three games, blowing 15-point leads back-to-back-to-back to back to back against the Denver Nuggets. And those young, resilient Nuggets would come back against the Utah Jazz down 3-1 against the LA Clippers. Those Denver Nuggets will come back in the second half with the Mike Malone as their coach, rejuvenated Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Nikola Jokic. They didn't know how to design to play a game. And when it came down to it, Jokic was a huge problem against the LA Clippers. They did not have a true big that can be able to stop him down low and to create plays and passes and such forth. But I'm not going to get too in-depth within that series. The Clippers did lose, blow a 3-1 series lead, and that pretty much shook the whole NBA world. Um, it even shook me as well, because I expected the Clippers to lose in the West playoffs, but I did not expect them to lose to a young puppies of the Denver Nuggets. And that leads them now into the offseason to where the Denver Nuggets did not make a lot of free agency signings or trades. They actually lost Mason Plumley. They lost Torrey Craig, Troy Daniels, and as well as the Denver Nuggets did lose a key player on their team, Jeremy Grant. Now, if we're looking down onto the LA Clippers, you did lose Montrezl Harrell, the sixth man of the year, but you were able to replace him with Serge Ibaka, a true big on your team that can stretch the four as a stretch five, has championship DNA, and let alone can bring a new locker room presence for the team. And Ty Lu is now the head coach for the LA Clippers. So pretty much as everyone's been stating, a lot of people still have the Clippers and the Nuggets in around both of them in the top two through the top five seed in the West. And that's kind of a good place to put them. I have my predictions. I expect the LA Clippers to still finish with a second best record in the Western Conference. And for myself, I expect the Denver Nuggets to probably be around a top four seed within that range. Um, but let's jump a little more here on first take, and we'll get a little more deeper when it comes to expectations of each of these teams. Against the Nuggets, who knocked them out of the playoffs in the bubble, this one is in Denver, 1030 Eastern ESPN. Stephen A., who do you have more faith in moving forward? Is it the Nuggets or the Clippers? This is a pretty simple one. I still have a lot more faith when it comes to the L.A. Clippers. They are on a shorter time window to quote-unquote get to the finals, let alone win a championship. Am I saying that's going to happen? I'm not saying that at all whatsoever. But the Denver Nuggets with their young core of Jamal Murray, Jokic, Michael Porter Jr., they're around 23 to 25 years of age. They got plenty of years to go further down the road. The L.A. Clippers, they got pretty much a two to three more year window covering. They re-signed Paul George with the max contract for five years. Kawhi Leonard is going to be entering a free agent if he declines and to opt out, which he probably will. I'm not saying he's going to leave, but you got to put that in perspective. And Kawhi and Paul George are in their 30s as of right now. I do have more faith within the LA Clippers. They did address a big by bringing in Serge Ibaka, which was huge for them. They really could have used a floor general and a point guard. Um, I expected them to get Rondo if they were to be able to snatch him from LA, but that wasn't the case. So right now, you're still rolling with Patrick Beverly, which it's all right. It's fine, but it's not fluid enough. But I still expect the LA Clippers to be a top two seat in the West. I actually expect them to finally reach the conference finals appearance within this season in the Battle of LA. Within the Denver Nuggets, they lost some key and valuable players. And we can see right now, the LA Clippers right now are a second seed with a 4-2 and two record. Or actually, my bad. I think they're a top four seed right now. 
They do have a 4-2 and two record. And within the first five games, the Denver Nuggets are at the bottom at 1-4 and four record. So you really got to bat an eye when it comes to Denver and the crew. And I expected the Denver Nuggets to take not a leap back, but I, I decided I, had, I knew they would take a step down after losing those pieces and not really addressing anyone else. Anyway, um, they were able to re-sign Paul Millsap for one last year. Um, but Paul Millsap is 35, so those legs keep going down and down. The Denver Nuggets right now, you really have to bat your eye on two players. On the progression of potential of Michael Porter Jr., which he can be a candidate for most improved. And then Jamal Murray, he can also be a candidate for most improved player. They Those two came out of nowhere when it came into the bubble in the playoffs, and those were two different players, which is a good thing for your Denver, but you're really going to rely heavily on those two. Jokic is still going to be Jokic when it comes down to it um, on that. So I got more faith on the LA Clippers. I expect them to go further in the playoffs. I would not be shocked at all whatsoever if the Denver Nuggets were to get bounced in the first round of the playoffs. Jump in the gun. Let's get back in. Uh, for me, it's the Clippers. And the reason why it's the Clippers is because I think that when you talk about the Clippers going up against the Los Angeles Lakers, again, they're highly motivated. And I think they match up particularly with the acquisition of Serge Ibaka, not to beat the Lakers, uh, but I think all of those intangibles, all of those things on the side combined with uh, the skill set that they have in play, I definitely think that could give the Lakers a significant run for their money. My issue with the Denver Nuggets, Max, is, believe it or not, the Joker. He is incredibly skilled. We know that he is a special talent. He's an all-star. We know he's big time. We get it. Except for when he's going up against Anthony Davis. I think that when he has to answer to Anthony Davis, I think it's a problem for him. And when you acquire Marcus Gasol and then you add uh, Montrez Harrell as well, even though he had his way with Harrell and those boys for the Clippers last year in the conference semifinals when he averaged 24. The bottom line is I just think that going, when you talk about them or compared to the Clippers as being that formidable threat to the Lakers, I trust the Clippers more because I think athleticism is desperately needed when you're going up against the Los Angeles Lakers. Joker can play, uh, no doubt about that, but he, he can't jump onto a curve. I mean, he has no hops whatsoever. You need that against Anthony Davis. He does doesn't have it and I think because he's such a focus for Denver offensively as well he should be when he's going up against Anthony Davis it's a huge huge problem for Denver to overcome and that's my issue with that matchup and listen I'm gonna give the respect to the Denver Nuggets in the playoffs last season but if they were to rematch there's no way the LA Clippers are going to let that fold that way that did last season that was a 3-1 deficit the Clippers were out of it. There was a lot of background stories. Lou Will, Montres Harrell, getting in late, family things, friends, going to different clubs, yada, 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 not wanting to be there, COVID. We know the deal. No excuses for the LA Clippers. Again, Serge Ibaka is a huge piece for their team. They are highly motivated. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship, but I expect them to go in an upward direction, and they've proven so. Um, the only reason why I would say the Denver Nuggets are on a downward trend Again, they lost some key valuable pieces. Paul Missop is getting older in age, being a starting power forward for your team. And within that, the Denver Nuggets need to make more internal moves. Because they didn't make they didn't make the right choices. They didn't make the right free agency signings, let alone trades. Now you were able to bring in RJ Hampton potential in the future, but not as of for right now. And the Denver Nuggets, they're not in a win now mode. They do have the next couple of seasons to progress within those core three. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool with it. Well, look, the reason AD is better than Jokic is because AD is a superstar, a superstar on both ends of the floor. But Jokic can do so many things off. Anthony Davis is not a superstar. Anthony Davis is a star player. A superstar, there's only around five or six superstars in the NBA. Those are the top tier players, such as LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, James Harden. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, those five. If you're looking at star players, a tier down, you're looking at the Giannis's of the world, Luka Doncic, Anthony Davis, etc., etc. Anthony Davis, I'm going to give his props. He's one of the best players in the NBA. He had an amazing playoffs and finals. A couple games in the finals. But Anthony Davis is not a superstar. Let's not throw that word so loosely. Defensively. 
You know, if you shut down his scoring and he can bully you inside, he can shoot from the outside. He is arguably, and you probably win the argument, the greatest passing big who ever lived, at least in the modern era. He can bring the ball up. Like, he could actually be your... It's going a little too far. Your point center, bringing the ball up and getting you into the offense or, or from the pivot or wherever. This dude is special. And, and more importantly, Stephen A., he and Jamal Murray play up in the playoffs. They become the best version of themselves when you need the most, right? I mean, these guys, and, and Jamal Murray's still getting better. So the difference between the two teams, and we can go to the supporting cast, and you're right, the Nuggets supporting cast is going to have to get better from within because they are a team who really probably needed to add something but didn't. But they have reason to believe that Michael Porter Jr., will become a legitimate third scoring star to go with the other two. In the meantime, Will Barton's no slouch. He's a good NBA player, as is Paul Millsap. Like, they have guys in their starting lineup and rotation who can play. But the important thing for me is I look at the Clippers, I see their two stars. And Paul George, I hate to do this. I don't like doing this to James Harden. I especially don't like doing it to Paul George, who, who like, I used to argue with people four or five years ago, he's better than Carmelo because he's a two-way player, and everyone was telling me I was crazy. So I really root for, for Paul George. But the fact is... Four years ago, <laughs> in 2016, Paul George was a better player than Carmelo Anthony. No doubt about it. Blake Griffin was a better player than Carmelo Anthony. I don't think anyone's really arguing with you over there, Max Kellerman. Now, if you're talking around six to seven years ago, that's different. Maybe, maybe. He goes away in the playoffs. Like, Carmelo was a guy who, when the moment was big, you can give him the ball and Carmelo could take you there. Paul George has not been that guy in the playoffs, period. Jokic has been, Jamal Murray has been, but only Kawhi has been on the Clippers. Now, so your number two scorer is going to be who? Lou Williams? Not that he can't do it, but that's not how it's supposed to be. Uh, they really need Paul George to be a superstar in the playoffs. I haven't seen it. I have to say I have more faith in the Nuggets as a result. Well, listen, Paul George, I, I mean, listen, last year, game seven, there's no excuse for it. Him and, him and Kawhi Leonard. But I'm just looking at his numbers here, Max, because I wanted to look it up. In the previous four playoff series that Paul George was in last year, and, and last year, he averaged 27, 28, 24, and 28. Now, Max, he could have played better, particularly in clutch moments. I understand that. But we're talking about him like, you know, you're talking about him like he just wet the bed every time that, you know what, he was just a shell of himself, like the damn near scrub. Paul George can ball. Paul George has had good performances in the postseason in his career. It hasn't been consistent enough. It certainly had, didn't occur last year, particularly in Game 7. But let's cut the brother a little bit of slack. It's not like the brother went AWOL yeah. and disappeared, other than Game 7. It's not like he went game, AWOL and just disappeared in all of these years. He's never done anything. Paul George has had plenty of good playoff game performances. They call it playoff P for a reason, Mr. Stephen A. Pandemic P for this one now. And you know what's hilarious? <laughs> they have that, I think it's a Gatorade commercial to where Paul George goes for a game-winning shot, turns around, goes in, he's flexing. And I don't think Paul George has ever had a game-winning shot in the buzzer in his life. I don't remember the last time seeing it. Usually he clanks it in the last minute, he passes it out. It doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. Looking into the playoffs, Paul George has had his bad moments. These bubble playoffs were horrendous against the Dallas Mavericks. The Denver Nuggets it got even worse when it came down to it. Um, Paul George has stated he's healthier now with his shoulder. He said the same thing last season, but whatever. He's more rejuvenated. And it's hilarious because the Dallas Mavericks were playing against the Clippers without Kawhi this season. Paul George was quote-unquote leading the crew, and they lost by 50 points. So... It is what it is. I don't trust Paul George, but if you're looking at do I have more faith in the Clippers or Nuggets coming to this season and going to the playoffs and going down the stretch, I'm going to say the Clippers because, again, they have a shorter window of veteran players that are in their 30s now. So their window is very short, around two to three seasons. I'm not saying this is the last season. I mean, things could happen, but I'm going to say around two to three seasons. The Denver Nuggets, again, you got around... Four to like seven more seasons, if anything. But the Clippers have a huge direction of trying to win a championship, let alone get to the finals. 
The Nuggets are fine as of right now if they don't make the finals in the next three seasons or so. So there's more pressure on the Clippers, and push comes to shove. That's when you have more faith in, at least for me on this side. It's just the sustained level of excellence that's required for you to get to that next level where LeBron and AD and those boys, because AD averaged 31 last year in that conference finals against the Joker. He averaged 21. AD averaged 31. Yeah, we need to see more of that from Paul George, no question. But it wasn't like Paul George was some scrub that can't show. All right. Hey, at the end of the day, I don't have any of these players. Or my bad. At the end of the day, I don't have any of these teams of the Nuggets or Clippers coming out of the West. So I can kind of care less anyways. I expect the Denver Nuggets to probably lose in the first or second round. They're not getting back to the conference finals this season. And looking at the LA Clippers, they're either going to get bounced in the second round or the conference finals. I'm likening more of them to come out and lose in the conference finals against the LA Lakers when it comes down to it. And the end game. The future is bright for the Denver Nuggets. They really need to address their bench and quick. And I believe they will. I believe they will. The LA Clippers, you need to find a floor general for your team and franchise. Um, you may have to look into Isaiah Thomas in free agency. That's a player you may can look into, even though you waived him last season within that trade. But Isaiah Thomas on the LA Clippers could be an ideal fit when you're going into the playoffs as it is. So we'll cover a little more when it comes to it. L.A., Denver, who you got? 